Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Infinite Franchisee Show. Today we have the lovely and joyous Angela Cote, who is the founder of ACA and is on a mission to maximize training and education in the franchise space. And so Angela, I'm so excited to have you on. Um, it's good to see you. Thank you. It's good to see you too. It's uh, not quite as the same as in person, but always love these conversations. We can talk shop, right? That's right. Yeah, I know. Usually Angela and I are hanging out at a conference. Um, and I mean, I think you have a collection of hats and beautiful outfits. You're always dressed to the nines. Like you can easily find Angela in a crowd. Like, Aww. so it's Thank fun. you. Well, it's, yeah, it's kind of, it's sort of become the brand, I guess. It's uh, when I first started um, networking and, and franchising, you know, at the conferences and things, I was like, you know, do I, do I put myself out there and, and have a little fun with it? And I was like, you know what, the more you are yourself, the more you attract the right people for you. So if I dress stuffy and like wear shoulder pads and like pencil skirts, which isn't really my style, then I'm going to attract that kind of person. So I'm like, let's just, you know, be who we are. I agree a hundred percent. I think the last time we were somewhere was in February and I had on a, a almost a floor length uh, fur vest, <laughs> but you know, people were petting me the whole time. Like, I love this, you know? So uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, you want to stand out from the crowd a little bit. That's, you know, be memorable. Right. So, and you're doing things much like we are in the franchising industry where you're shaking it up in the industry itself with your what you offer and what you're bringing to the table and that's what i love about what you're doing we're both on the same mission believing that more training more education is needed if uh we really want franchisees to be as successful as they can be and actually meet their true potential might be the better way to put it um so I would love, so can you explain to everyone exactly your focus in this realm uh, that we're in? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, we're really on a mission to, to maximize the impact of field support. So um, what, you know, I, I had identified just myself having been in the field and then spending many years as a multi-unit franchisee, seeing that, that if the person in the field myself included when I was that person had better coaching and training and support. I could have done a better job with franchisees and really helped them. You know, if my impact was better for them, that would help the overall, like the win-win, you know, relationship that franchising is. So what we do at AC Inc, the way we do that is a, a few different ways. Um, we have, uh, you know, everything from evaluating field coaches. We have an assessment we do, which, um, you know, is a combination of, uh, actually using a, a custom Zoracle profile for anybody that's familiar with Zoracle um, to um, asking the franchisees, the franchisor and getting a full picture of um, where there might be gaps with that person in the field so that we do that assessment. And then we have training and coaching to help them, you know, fill those gaps um, in their skill set so that they can be more, um, more effective in the role. And then th that incorporates things like one-on-one -on -one coaching with the, with those people and or courses. Um, we have field coach round tables and, uh, and then we even do fractional field coaching work um, in situations where a company is trying to get their support figured out or just needs to level up. Even if it's an established brand, we find actually sometimes the more established the brand, the more they need help because they're just stuck in their own ways. And, you know, support really is changing. People, franchisors are recognizing that in order to be effective, we need to be more proactive. I know you, I don't need to explain this to you, but we agree on this, you know, being more proactive with the way franchisees are taken care of. So um, in, in situations where we go in and do that fractionally, we're getting to role model, you know, how it should be. And then they can pick that up and take it on once they're ready as a brand. So those are a bunch of the things, everything from assessment to the education and training. Um, and, and we're actually, um, on the brink of launching, I won't actually say what it exactly is because I'm not sure when this is going to come out, but we're, we're on the brink of launching a, a program that's going to really um, help it, with the consistency of the way that uh, franchise field coaches are delivering you know, their expertise. That's maybe amazing. some people might read between the lines on that, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, 
Okay, so really quick, I want to take a step back um, because a lot of our audience, of course, may be thinking about entering the franchising industry, but haven't quite done it just yet. Or uh, so they may not even know what we're talking about when we talk about field coaches. So um, there's sometimes, and, and different franchisors refer to them in different ways. Sometimes you hear franchise business coach, sometimes it's a field coach. Can you explain exactly kind of that, that how that works so that everybody understands? Yeah, well, you're, you hit the nail on the head that there's no standardized term for it. And so, yeah, so the, well, just to clarify what the role is, it's the person that works on the franchise or team and supports the franchisees, um, you know, in, in everything from the operations of the business to uh, becoming better business owners. And, and this role can be divided amongst a, a number of people where there's a trainer, you know, there's an operational, like a person that can... Um, help them with the operations. And then there's the business coach. So there, you know, there are a different, different focuses for different people. Um, but the whole idea is that they are that person that is, we say the field, even though that could be over zoom, coaching them over zoom or whatever it is, but it's the field because it's in between, you know, the franchise or home office and the franchisee that's out there in the field. So, um, yeah, different titles can be, you know, franchise business coach. We've heard, um, area manager, uh, field consultant was one of the older terms and we just kind of figured that by saying field coach we're kind of making it a little bit more generic so that's the term that we uh, we go with yeah and and some franchisors they have people who truly go out into the field and they go visit the individual locations and try to help the the franchisees inside their own location maybe figure out some operational things and, and look for those gaps. And then there's other franchisors that have only Zoom support or, you know, a monthly call or something of that nature where no one's actually visiting the locations. Is that something that you help franchisors figure out what's best for their model and establish? Yes, absolutely. And it, it really, it, it often depends on the type of business, right? So if it's brick and mortar, if it's it, if it's a quick serve restaurant or anything dealing with food, then, you know, there, there has to be more in person to, you know, see the operation and make sure that, you know, the standards are being met on site. So it obviously gets more serious when we're talking about things like food or children, you know, if it's education, like any type of, um, you know, uh, early childhood education type business. So it, it will depend on the business for sure. But when it comes to the, the business coaching, we're, we feel pretty strongly that it, it, can be done it, sh it probably should mostly be done i shouldn't say most shouldn't necessarily mostly be done but it's mostly practical to do that over zoom but we do see a big difference in franchisee engagement and, and performance and success when there is some element of in person so even if it's a a mobile service business we still really encourage franchisors to figure out the resources to actually go, you know, get out there and see them in person. They franchisees love it unless you're there just to hold them compliant, which they don't always love. But if it's, if it's a true partnership, you know, the franchisee is usually really excited to have some support like that. So, um, yeah, we, especially with, with the pandemic, we've seen brands that used to do more in person and they're, they, they're trying to figure out if they should go back to more in person. Cause it seems to be kind of working, but then they're kind of assessing and going, Actually, I think a little more in person would be a good a good thing. We just need to figure out like resources for that. I agree with you. I mean, we've been doing more in person events even within our own company with franchisees, the franchisees that we um, serve, and they're they're craving. I think a lot of people are craving more in person connection. You know, we've kind of been these hermits even, and it's just extended way past, I think what anybody expected when we were hit with the original challenge of the pandemic. Um, so, so tell me a little bit about what are some of the gaps that you guys see most often with field coaches that you're getting in there and kind of diagnosing and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two big ones that stand out right away, um, soft skills, and that sounds so cliche, but it, it is really, what, what we find really interesting is when a company says, yeah, we'd like to get on a call and hear more about what professional development you do for field coaches. 
they often think of the traditional things that, okay, can you help them understand profit and loss statements better so that they can teach it better um, or, or sales or marketing or whatever, you know, more technical. But then once we start talking about things, when I say soft skills, like how to build credibility with franchisees, especially, and you, I know you can relate to this, um, you know, you having been a franchisee yourself, you know, a multi-unit, right? You, you were multi-unit franchisee. And so, you know, like, um, the credibility of the field coach, you know, myself included when I was, when I was in the field and I was the, the 20 year old, um, inexperienced female boss's daughter, you know, showing up to help franchisees, they're like, yeah, right. You know, so like, how do we help these people have credibility when they go approach a franchisee, especially a high performing franchisee and, or a legacy franchisee who is, has been there a long time. Um, so that's where, you know, in the established brands, you bring in a new field person and this, the franchisee is going like, what are you going to be able to do to help me? Um, so that's the, what we mean by soft skills. Like how do you win that franchisee over? How do you have those really difficult conversations? You know, what, what do you do when a franchisee is ghosting you? You know, how do you approach that and deal with that? So the, one of the big things that stands out then is the soft skills side and, you know, leadership soft skills. The other thing is that uh, franchi franchisors are not, as you know, really often um, as, as thorough as they would like to be in, in, in teaching franchisees how to be better business owners, right? Like we hear all the time, my franchisees are stuck as operators in the business. We want them to be business owners and the field coaches aren't really equipped to, to do that kind of work. They, it might be because the framework itself that they're dealing with is not giving them the opportunity. So, you know, it's only, there's a monthly call with a bunch of franchisees. How do I, in one hour a month, teach franchisees how to be business owners? So they, so, and then they, so that can be part of the problem and, or they're just not equipped to know how to do that. So those are two um, big areas. And we see that what, what's been incredible is to see how much field coaches want the development. Uh, we recently launched our uh, uh, field coaching course and we, you know, we thought, Oh, it's our first one. If we get, you know, five or 10 people, we'll just run with it. And, um, had almost 60 people sign up. Um, and we didn't have to do as much marketing as we thought to even get to that point. Like people want it, you know, um, we had people that are paying for it out of their own pocket, not their, their company. Cause they want the development. Um, we also run field coach round tables and at those round tables, um, it's just field coaches, no, no bosses. It's just nice, safe space for them. And they tell us they want to be able to, to do this more proactive business coaching, but they're not being coached on how to do it. They're not being trained. They're not having, um, you know, the resources or the opportunity to do it. So, yeah. So just to summarize the two areas, it's the soft skills and then the being able to, to provide business skills training for franchisees. So on average, how often are you seeing um, or how often are these field coaches spending with each individual franchisee generally? You know, I mean, obviously it's going to differ from brand to band, brand, but kind of as an average, what does it typically look like? Yeah, um, not enough. <laughs> um, and I'm sure you agree. And, you know, just um, on that note, like I think you know, this, we're trying to help franchisors recognize as you are, how important this is, right? That, you know, it's, it's not a line item. It's an investment to eventually equal more royalties. And we call it unlocking the hidden profitability in the franchise system. So when I say that's not enough, just in case anybody's listening and if they're a franchisor thinking, well, my objection is I don't have the resources to do that. Well, do you want your franchise? Do you want more royalties? Do you want like it? Like there's this missing operational leverage that that's there. Um, so what we see, oh yeah, it's definitely a range. Um, usually the first year franchisors understand the importance of like weekly um, calls, you know, one-on-one -on -one, and maybe by six months they go to every two weeks. And then by a year, it's maybe once a month is I'd say on average, what we see um, the better, more progressive brands that, that are, that are growing more that want, like that, that are growing through franchisee profitability and performance, um, will add in, you know, some performance group coaching or, um, more group coaching opportunities, you know, 
uh, town halls, things like that, that contribute. So I think like you got to look at it as a whole and, and what other opportunities are out there. If it, and, it, and that helps with the scalability and the resource side of things that if, you know, you can't do a weekly call with a franchisee that's three years in, what can you do to supplement that? So, I mean, in a perfect world, I think a weekly check-in would be amazing. Um, maybe it's like once a month, it's an hour and the other days it's a 30 minute call, even with a more established franchisee. Um, actually I'll say this, what we've seen, uh, with the coaching that we've done and brands that, that implement this proactive coaching that has more sessions, um, that revenue of the franchisees in those, in that type of coaching is up 25 to 30% typically. So do the math, like, why don't you offer it? You know, and, and what we encourage people to do is offer it, but make the franchisee accountable to it. Like you, um, they, if they're not going to show up, then we're not going to give you that. Like, we're not going to charge you extra to have this. Cause we know that if you want this and you're going to show up, there's a good chance you're going to increase your revenue by 25 to 30%, which is going to come back to us in royalties but you just have to be accountable to showing up. And so it's like a, you know, one or two strikes you're out kind of situation, but that's, that's the way to deal with people that might be thinking, Oh, I don't know if I can do that much. Right. And for us, you know, the big objection from the franchisee when they're overwhelmed and they're doing all the things in the business is they, they struggle to see like, how can I get away for that? Oh, my, my field coach wants me to meet with them once a week. They don't understand that I'm doing all this stuff. I don't have time for that. And so for us, the very first thing we have to get over, which I'm sure you coach on is like that mindset of like that half hour of doing things at the cash register does not equate to growth that you're just, you're just an employee at that standpoint. We need to get you to an owner where you can grow. And the only way to do that is to carve out time and focus on the things that help you grow. Um, and we meet with our clients like up to nine times a month, they can meet with us. And, but it, you know, we do everything. Like we don't just, they're working on, we're, we're working on mindset and marketing, local marketing and all the different hats that they wear instead of just the model and then their profitability and not just because, but, the, but what the things the franchisor needs to focus on in order for, you know, their bandwidth and their budget. Well, and what you're doing is what I'm guessing, because these are people that are choosing to work with you and hire you. So they are bought in. So the number of times you're meeting with them, they want, right. Also. So that's, that is, like you said, the mindset you said a minute ago, the difference between someone who thinks that I can't give up 30 minutes of working behind the counter because I, I, I can't, just, I need to do that. I can't give that up to go work on my business that, yeah, there's, there's two different mindsets out there. And, and so, yeah, if the if franchisee has that mindset, then I think the, the more that you can do as long as it's, you know, uh, intentional and productive calls, then I think that's great. So to be effective, obviously there needs to be a balance of how many franchisees and individual field coaches working with, because if they have too many, they can't give the proper attention to, to them. So what is the ideal number in your opinion? Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a million dollar question because it does depend. It is a little bit brand specific. Um, and then also some like different brands will break up, um, who is under the care of the field coach based on different criteria? Is that geographical? Is it based on the stage the franchisees at? Is it based on their revenue or maybe multi-unit? So there are some things that play into it, but if I just sort of try to remove all those factors, um, I would say between um, 15 to 25 franchisees. So 15 to 25 is, is probably a, a good number. And a lot of people will probably push back initially on the 15. Um, but again, we got to remember what we're doing here is we're trying to improve franchisee performance, which if they have higher revenue, then there's, you know, again, it's, it pays for itself. And then you have happier franchisees. It's easier to find more franchisees. So that's my quick, like also defending what I'm saying, just to be clear. But um, I guess one other thing it depends on too, is it, is it can depend on the type of um, business, you know, again, if it's, um, 
if it's a business that's pretty straightforward, you know, that maybe the franchisees will need a little bit less um, versus something more complicated. So there, there's a lot to factor in there. And it, and then it also depends on, um, yeah, which franchisees are, are being coached. So if you gave a field coach, you know, a bunch of um, established franchisees um, that, that were not as open to this proactive coaching and meeting with the coach, then, you know, that number is going to go up. Um, but I will say on that note, we, one of our favorite questions is what about my top performers? Like, what are we going to coach them on? And I guarantee you, there are things that they have not realized. Oh, you know, yeah, I don't have to convince you, right? Strategy. Um, what are your 10 year goals? What's your exit plan, right? There, I'm sure you, you went through that as a franchisee yourself and see the importance of that. So, um, I, I again, it comes down to like how invested is the franchisee in getting the coaching. So if they're invested franchisees, then you're going to be more on the 15 to 25, I would say, ratio. It's interesting because one of the things that we talk to our clients about is really um, thinking through every employee on your team needs to be a revenue generator. And, and so that it's so interesting because I think many times franchisors look at field coaches as an expense right? So that's just somebody, I mean, that's an extra body I have to pay, but they're, they're not a salesperson. They're not necessarily bringing in revenue, but you're, you've tracked it. You can say like, look, they're going to help your franchisees raise their revenue by 25 to 30%. And therefore a proper field coach is in fact a revenue generator. Would you agree? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. All you have to do is uh, multiply your, your royalties by the increase um, and, and look at that over time and realize how much, you know, and again, there's those side factors like happier franchisees. And, and when you're in your franchise recruitment, being able to say, you know, we offer this um, more progressive, proactive coaching that a lot of franchisors don't offer. And so there's other side benefits um, that are going to, you know, pay off as well, like have their own ROI. Oh yeah, it's a, it's definitely a marketing feature of the brand that sets you apart from competition. So now, you know, I feel like we're kind of at this crossroads, maybe is the right word to say it, in franchising, at least here in the United States, where there's there's some scrutiny going on in the franchising world. The franchise rule is being looked at by the FTC, and they're looking at making some changes. Um, some different states have put some things in place that you know, are starting to really kind of the government dipping their hands into that franchise or franchisee relationship and saying like, um, if you do this, then it's making you liable for what's happening inside the four walls of each individual franchise unit. One of those things is, you know, the joint employer discussion, which I'm sure you're aware of. How is it that you all approach that with franchisors that are here in the United States and what, you know, franchise or field coaches should or should not be teaching in order to be cognizant of and respectful of the line that, you know, the franchisor doesn't want to cross. Uh, the first thing that pops into my head here is that ultimately the franchisee is, is they're, they're not being forced um, to comply to the coaching that is being given to them right so um it's not like if you don't do what what the field coach says you know um in terms of growing your business you know you're you're in, in default like for the most part right like these like this this proactive coaching it's it's um more uh for the individual anyway to to choose what they're doing if that makes sense um, when it comes just to getting specific on the joint employer, um, definitely, you know, you can offer training, right. And, and, and teaching and training to franchisees. And so if you're what we generally, um, find people are comfortable with, cause it really does. I, I do see a range of, um, you know, the different comfort levels of franchisors of where they're like everything from, Oh, we don't touch anything to do with that to, we're actually more concerned with our franchisees being successful and we're willing to take a little risk. I'm not promoting one side or the other here, but um, I think if you're teaching a franchisee leadership skills, it's a little bit less direct, like it's intentional to help them be better with their employees. But if you're teaching them leadership skills or pointing them to 
a resource, it's, it's a safer bet. So I think, you know, there's always that sort of balance. And um, again, if you, it's the compliance piece is more around things like the more technical things that they need to do. Right. So I don't think it really creeps in too much. Yeah. Well, I happened to talk to a field coach, um, like a supervisor over many field coach and a brand. And we were talking about joint employer and he said, I mean, I just told one of my franchisees last week, he has to fire that guy. That guy's bad. You know, he's not doing what he needs to do and he needs to fire him. I'm like, Oh, Oh, oh. <laughs> let's talk about that. That probably crosses the line. Right. So, um, so I just think that it's a conversation that's going to come up more and more. And I think that this, I don't know that our industry realizes it yet, but I think this is um, the evolution of franchisors realizing that they do need to partner with outside support for their franchisees in certain areas, either to educate their field trainers, you know, at a higher level, or to supplement what they can or cannot teach their franchisees, because the franchisees still need HR support and understand, you know, understanding all of the um, all of the employee management piece, leadership being one component of that. But if the franchisor is going to put themselves at risk, they could they can partner with somebody like you or somebody like me or a combination or, and then I'm sure that like. Like we talked about, we're the pioneers in the industry, kind of in in these two lanes, and I'm sure there's going to be more coming up um, at, behind us because the industry is too big for for uh, us to work with everyone, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to change everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> Make it better. That's right. That's right. Well, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Angela. Now, if uh, for the franchisors we have listening, how do they get in touch with you? Um, to start to explore up-leveling their field coaches through what you're doing? Well, definitely the best I have to say is our website. We recently uh, did a refresh and update, uh, launched a new website, really. Um, and so it should be pretty clear on there. And then there's, of course, a contact us form on there. And we'll triage to the right person on the team based on, um, you know, what we kind of know in, in initially. But always happy to get on calls with people and explore this, even if they're not ready to move forward, you know, just so that they know what we're doing for when they are um, ready to do something. And even if it's a field coach themselves listening, you know, we have like our field coach round tables are, um, they're 99 bucks a month, uh, once a week, you know, you drop in, you come when you can, like there's some, there's some pretty affordable ways that they can just start to get involved in our community without taking a, a full jump in if they're not quite ready. That's awesome. Well, I love what you're doing and I appreciate it so much because I know you are making a huge difference in the lives of so many franchisees um, through the work that you do. So thank you. And I just sincerely appreciate you having me and, and enabling me to share what we're doing. It's always so important to get the word out. Right. So thank you so much.